Hey kids, it's been a few hours of detecting. So far we have some trash, and that's okay. Luckily I'm still in the shade on this side of the hill. I can see the sun coming. It's definitely starting to feel a little humid, probably 40% humidity, I don't really know. But it's not bad out. It's really kind of beautiful right now. The desert creatures are all starting to come out. I'm seeing bees and wasps fly around. It's pretty awesome. So you can take a look at the trash we have so far. I think it's a lovely bunch of trash. There it is. Good old monster in the apex in my gloves. We're going to keep going and see if we can pull a piece of gold off the side of this hill. All right, kids. I have a target that is pretty much staying predominantly on the non-ferrous side of the display, the discrimination display. <laughs> Quite frankly, I don't trust the discrimination on the monster or any machine. We haven't found any lead in this hill, just trash. So I am hoping it's either a piece of gold or secondarily a piece of lead. Let's see if we can pinpoint it here. I believe I know where it is. Get down here and confirm. Alrighty. Let's get in there and take a look. Let's set the camera down here for a quick second. Put my eyeballs on. And we'll see if we can find this together. I've never been good at finding targets while I'm holding a camera because I get excited and I just don't care where the camera goes half the time. But we'll see what comes out here. Alrighty. Scrape away a little bit of those book pages. Blow a little bit. Move some more of this around. I'm always hopeful that I'll see the gold shine up. That's what I like. I love it when I see the gold shine up. And there it is. Wow. That is pretty sweet. That is a nice little coarse piece of gold. That is awesome. I'm guessing that's probably four tenths of a gram. Let's see if I can get a better better shot of it. Well that makes my day. That is not a piece of lead. That is a piece of gold. Hopefully there's some more. Got some time left before it gets too hot. Gonna keep going. Wish I had another cup of coffee. We'll make the best of it, kids. All right, so I'm gonna show you a couple of things here. And you may not be familiar with finding gold on a hillside or in a wash. You may not be familiar with prospecting at all. But I'm kind of at near the bottom of the hill at this point. I've came down from where I found the trash and the gold. Kind of give you a uh, maybe it's a quick lesson, I don't know what you would call it, in uh, prospecting. Um, you can see right down here, or maybe you can see, there, there's a piece of trash just laying right here. I don't know if you can see it. It's a, it's a piece of metal right in front of my finger there. Of course, there's the monster in the apex. And if you walk up this wash, and yes, this is actually a wash, Very overgrown. It's quite steep, which means when it does rain or flash floods in here, things change rapidly. So what it looked like 50 years ago doesn't look like that anymore. Hand stacks can wash away pretty quickly. 
One thing that turned me on to this area is when I got up right here, I'm not too, too far from the top. Look at this hand stack. The moment I saw this, I knew without a shadow of a doubt there's gold in here to be found. I didn't know how big the gold was or anything like that. I'm pointing to the hand stacks that are continuing up a steep hill here. So this is pretty cool. Hopefully this helps you at some point. You hike, you're kind of maybe in a remote area and you see something like this. You can see where some of the hand stacks actually collapsed here, but you can see them. There's another piece of trash back here. So there were some miners in here before me. Years and years ago, finding gold, and I'm picking up what they missed. So again, a quick, quick lesson, hopefully it's helpful. Pay attention to what you see out here. And just might get you over some gold. Hey kids, what a fun hunt. Been out for several hours. It'll be hot in a few more hours. I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here before that happens. Found a lot of trash and one coarse eluvial nugget on that hill. I'm sure there's more. I hope you enjoyed the uh, education about the hand stacking. My backpack's down here a ways. I do have my water and my uh, dorm in reach explorer with me. Fun fact, I'm gonna throw this out there for anybody who has had neck burn from the strap, a canteen strap. I've met people out prospecting, hiking, detecting, backpacking, and they have canteens or something with a strap around their neck and they're just cutting their neck up. Sometimes they wear those sporty, kind of cool, whatever shirts, fashionable shirts, and you know they don't even have a collar to protect their neck. But I'm pretty sure on work shirts like this, these old good old-fashioned work shirts, is the reason why even on military uniforms that you have a collar for your canteen strap, your rifle strap, you know, your gear strap, whatever it might be. I'm no expert with the history of clothing, <laughs> far from it. I'm probably not the most fashionable person on earth. But anyway, it does work. So if you're hiking and you're messing up your neck, use your collar, kids. Hope that helps. Later.